Again, my name is Jason Tarr. I'm a client success specialist here at Banwango, and you are here for our March webinar. We are so excited to have you. We are talking through a success story that we just finished with Calistoga Chamber of Commerce Visit Calistoga. Their Winter in the Wineries Pass is a paid wine pass, and we have brought along with us today Eric Reichert, the president and CEO of the Calistoga Chamber of Commerce Visit Calistoga, and Eric is going to share with you in his own words about what this experience was like with Banwango and really the excitement of, of how well this passport performed for them this past winter. And so we are going to kind of lay the groundwork here for Eric. And also just to let you all know, we are really wanting this to be a conversation today. So Eric and I are going to kind of banter back and forth. We want to hear your questions and we'll jump in and answer any of those along the way. But to tee you up, Eric, I'm going to just give everybody kind of a lay of the land. Calistoga is a beautiful area in Northern California's wine country. It's at the top of Napa Valley and about a population of about 5,000 or so. So a smaller community, but they box above their weight when it comes to all of the natural resources, the wineries, and, and everything at their fingertips there. Um, Calistoga Chamber of Commerce, Visit Calistoga, it's kind of essentially one entity. So you've got the chamber, and then you've got their, their tourism and marketing arm. And uh, Eric, do you want to speak to that a little bit more and, and just share, because a lot of clients may have a similar situation. Sure, absolutely. Good morning, everybody, or afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, I'm so happy to be here. This is I'm so glad to talk about um, this passport program that we just had. Um, yes, so our um, our organizational structure is um, we have Visit Calistoga, which is the tourism arm that is funded mainly by um, the city and tourism tax. Um, so we do the marketing for the city on uh, uh, for the destination on behalf of the city. The other side of the coin that I manage is the Chamber of Commerce, and that's primarily a membership organization. It's membership driven. We're funded by members. And then we have um, fundraisers throughout the year. Um, our Winter in the Wineries Passport being the biggest fundraiser for the Chamber side of things to help pay salary, pay office expenses, rent, all of that stuff is that the the winner in the wineries passport is our biggest. We have other smaller fundraisers and some that have actually turned into money losers because of inflation and everything else. But this is consistently our biggest, biggest money maker um, as a chamber. So um, we were excited um, to kind of switch it up this year after 13, 12 years of doing kind of the same thing. Yeah, great, Eric. Thank you. And we're we're going to talk through what Eric and his team did to switch it up this year here in just a moment. Um, and as Eric mentioned, you know, in addition to being a fundraiser, this is really a chance for them to help have a vehicle to, to get people into town during the shoulder season of the winter. So about November to February is this time where they're really hoping to drive some additional traffic to those wineries. And as you'll see in a minute, that definitely happened. And so... As and I'll, we, I'll chime in. I'll chime in. It, it is tough for us to get people all the way up to the top of the valley. A lot of people stop at Napa or Yountville, if you know where the Napa Valley is. And so trying to get them all the way up, especially in the shoulder season, is, is hard work for us. So um, it's it's that's why this passport has been successful. Is it's helped to bring people up. Yeah. And you guys did a great job getting them up there, Eric, this year. Um, so. As we kind of transition, and I'm going to pass this off to Eric to really take the, the wheel and drive for a lot of the rest of our presentation today, I just wanted to share, some of you may or may not be familiar with how Bandwango works. You may be a prospective client or you may be a new client. And so when we begin a client relationship, we have what we refer to as our discovery call. It's a chance for me as your client success person to speak with the client and hear from them directly. What are their goals? What are they hoping to achieve? And by doing that and having that conversation, we really look for ways to match up our technology use cases with what our clients hope to achieve. And so it's very driven and we have a we have a focus in mind headed into building the technology before anything ever starts on, on our side. And so Eric and I had one of those discovery calls and I remember that very fondly. Uh, it was a great opportunity to meet Eric and Tracy on his team. And so Eric, why don't you tell me a little bit um, and share with, with, with everybody a little bit more about some of the things that we discussed during that call, what were some of the initial ideas and goals that you shared with me that, that drove our, our project here? 
Sure. So um, we had been doing this passport for um, 12 years and it had always been a paper passport. It has always been, it looks just like a passport. It's very cute. It's got the stamp on it. Pages at wineries would have their own stamp. Um, but it was getting a little dated. Um, the, the, just the idea of it. it. It's a, it's a cool concept, but there were tons of times where people would lose their passports or they would leave them somewhere. Um, and we would have to just kind of work with them to figure it out, which wasn't a huge deal, but we started kicking around the idea of doing a digital passport. And I had no idea um, where to go for it. So I just went to Google and started searching and um, looked at a couple options and um, Bandwango kind of came up as the best kind of best in class of, of this sort of thing that we were looking at doing. So we um, scheduled a call, we got everything done and I got on a call with um, Jason and Danny um, one of the, uh, I don't know if she's considered, she's one of your programmers or one of your yeah. Engineers. Yeah. And um, immediately felt at ease, felt listened to. Um, it was, it was a really great experience. We talked about um, how to make the, the, the take, the physical passport and kind of pick it up and turn it into a digital asset that people could access on their phones easily, um, wouldn't get lost, wouldn't get misplaced, wouldn't get wet. Um, you know, people dropping in puddles, things like that. It was just always happening. Um, so Jason really helped guide us through the process and really um, said, well, what I appreciated the most was the honesty. There was, you know, I, I'm a recovering salesperson. So there's a lot of times where I, you know, I've heard people say what they can do and then they aren't able to do it actually. And, and the thing with Jason and Danny was what I believe in is like, if you can't do something, let's find an option that works. And it wasn't, it wasn't ever a no, it was, we can't do that, but how about this? And whatever they proposed always seemed to work. So it was a real, right from the beginning, it was a real trust factor. It was um, the listening factor that Jason and Danny did with us was was amazing. So uh, then they came back, we had subsequent meetings and things, we just kind of worked through that process. Um, and it was great. It was it was right from the beginning, I knew it was going to be a good relationship. We were nervous, to be honest, we were nervous about offering a digital passport. Um, yeah, why don't you talk a little bit more about that, Eric, because I remember you and I on that first call, and you guys just weren't sure what to expect, because the paper passport had been in place for such a long time. You have a lot of guests who are used to that method of of checking in at the locations. And so can you talk to a, a little bit more about what what your maybe your concern was going in and also about how that led us to offering the the Banwango digital passport on your website side by side with your paper passport from your your previous vendor. Yeah, so the concern on my end, so Tracy from our office was all in on digital. She wanted to get rid of physical passports 100%. And I was like, absolutely not. We are not doing that. <laughs> and I was nervous about digital because I didn't know how well it was going to spend or uh, how it was, well it was going to sell versus the spend that we were going to do with Bandwango, which to be honest, wasn't, a, you know, the Bandwango model is a very good affordable model, but it was still... I was nervous about it because it had never been done. I didn't know how people were going to react. We have a lot of older... Um, people that come up and use the passport. So I was worried about technology for some of the older folks. Um, so what we did is I said, all right, well, let's, we're going to sell them both. So um, we created a landing page on Visit Calistoga for winter in the wineries. And on the left side, it said classic physical paper passport. And on the right, it said new digital passport exclamation point. And um, we just wanted to see how it was going to go. Um, you know, it was, it was nerve wracking for me. And I honestly checked every single day once we did, I went on sale, I checked numbers every day, but, but what we did in 2022 and 2023, which by the way, was a record breaking year for us for, for net sales. Um, you can see that on the slide, we did $80,000. $80, I mean, that was a big year for you guys already. And so we were trying to build off of that. Right. Yes. And I was nervous that adding the digital part of it might detract from those sales. Yeah. Um, and we also did order less physical passports um, cause we knew we'd sell digital. We knew we'd sell. So we did a run of like 4,000 or something like that in 22, 23, we did 2,500 this last year. Um, so the other thing that we, we did, um, is we wanted to create a way for the wineries to, um, get paid on it, to have some skin in the game, right? They were giving free tastings away at their place for people that could just come in, do the tasting and walk out. There wasn't, you know, we wanted to create some sort of payment plan for them. So we worked 
with um with Jason and their team and his team to to come up with a way to to get the wineries a coupon code so we could track who paid and then the chamber slash visit Calstoga would pay them at the end of the the program. Um, right. So it was it was a real test to see which who was going to outsell who was it going to be you know it was like a horse race was it going to be the physical passport out doing digital or the other way around so um, it was it was fun to watch. Yeah, I love that, Eric. You know, I think a lot of times, uh, you know, we we forget about the power of kind of a collective marketing of a passport or a program like this. And so, you know, rather than feeling like as the client, you guys have to shoulder all of that. How can you activate your merchants and your venues to join you in that process yeah. and help spread the word? And I love the fact that you incentivized it for them. And, you know, of course, your program is a little bit unique in that you guys do you know, look at those reports at the end, and then you as the client are paying out the, the venues for, for whatever promo code usage occurred. But I still, I just, I love the fact that you tapped into that. And, and so just to kind of expand on, on what Eric was talking about in terms of the functionality of that, our team built a unique promo code for each of the wineries. And so the wineries would promote that promo code, whether it was on their social channels or most often, I think, in person at the winery at tasting room itself. And anybody who signed up with that promo code received a discount off of their order. And then we have a robust dashboard of data in our, our back end that Eric has access to. And so he was then able to look at that list of promo code usage and determine which wineries promo codes were getting used and when and by whom. And so at the end of the campaign, it was super easy for you to just pull that report into an Excel doc and understand, okay, such and such winery sold this many uh, on their promo code. And so we're going to pay them out accordingly. And so um, really, really thought that was a great way to activate your merchants and get them involved. And so Eric, the next thing I wanted to talk through with you is just diving into this this digital versus paper a little bit more, because that's really the heart of what our, our conversation is today. And so I, I put up on the screen here for everybody, when we say that, that you guys sold these passports side by side, we Literally. really mean it. What you're seeing on the screen here is a screenshot from the Visit Calistoga website. And you can see there's that little sliver of white space in between these two purchase cards, but they are, are side by side. So it was, it really was like an A-B test to understand yeah. which one are people going to, to choose. And they had the opportunity of one or the other. And, and Eric, I'll kind of pass it over to you to, to share the results on this of, of what you found in the course of, of this campaign with this choice that people were given. Well, sadly, I was wrong. Um, <laughs> I mean, not sadly. It was great that I was wrong. But I was, you know, I, I was nervous about it. Um, yeah. Digital, the digital passport, as you can see, well outsold the physical passport. We ordered, we ordered twenty five hundred physical passports, and so on the Visit Calistoga landing page, you could choose one or the other, right? Just like you right. see, um, we of the twenty five hundred that we had, we the wineries also sold some physical passports, so that that's not counting in. But from our side of it, digital sold outsold five to one. We ended up selling like three hundred and fifty ish paper passports wow. and how, I think we sold 2000 um, of the, wasn't it? It was, it was like 398 and then like 2032 or something. Yeah, like that. exactly. It was, it was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. Five it to was. one. I mean, that, that blew me away. Cause I know you and I were both, we were both on our computers probably every morning refreshing the, the numbers to look and see how things were doing. And I remember, you know, emailing you a couple of times and, and saying, my goodness, Eric, like the numbers, they just keep climbing, they just keep rising. Yes. And so it was really exciting to see. It was almost like this momentum that started from the beginning and it just yeah. continued throughout the campaign. It, it, it did. And we had, um, the only problem we had with that page and that little sliver is some people would accidentally buy the paper passport. Yeah. <laughs> they wanted the digital but they accidentally bought the paper. And so we would have to refund and then do that. So it was, um, or people would just come in with their physical passport and say, can we switch this out? Right. So the, the, the interest in the digital passport was so great. It was, it was amazing. And I understand it. You know, once I got to play around with it and, and use it um, just as to test it out and try to break it, um, which was almost impossible to do. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> it was um, it. The experience of it is so easy and you can't lose it and you can't leave it in the car or at the hotel. It's yeah. on your phone. So um, and it's the same general experience that you get with the paper passport. And there, there'll be people that will ride or die paper passports forever. But um, I know a lot of people that had collected all of the paper passports for the last 12 years went digital and loved it. They yeah. loved it. And um, some locals came in later after the program ended and I gave them a physical passport so they could still have it yeah. <laughs> to add to their collection. It was useless at that point, but they <laughs> wanted it. But um, they loved how easy the digital was and just how intuitive it was. And um, yeah, it's it was, it was amazing to see. Jason and I would email back and forth and I would just say, this is wildly above my expectations. And Tracy in my office, who was pushing me to do this, gave me a, I told you so just about every day. <laughs> Right, right. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, it was great to see that there really was an appetite for the digital because, as you mentioned, the convenience of it is is just so fantastic. And it's just one last thing people have to remember to bring with them. It's always there. It's always on their phone. We always all have our phones with us all the time. So unless you leave your phone at home, you are are good to go. And, you know, as you mentioned, and we'll talk through some some learnings that you had from doing the program and some things you'll do differently next year. But um, with the website, I know you guys are going to change up your landing page a little bit just to separate these sign up cards a little bit and and make things a little bit uh, maybe some different headers and whatnot there. But the great thing is, is, you know, as Eric was mentioning, if there was anybody that ran into an issue or or needed assistance on the digital side of things, Banwango offers a full staffed customer service team that is available seven days a week. So our team was able to handle any calls or emails. And really our goal, Eric, was to take all of that off of your plate to the best that we could and, and very quickly respond to any issues that came up. And so, and, which were and I will say, limited. So it was really a, a positive experience. A hundred percent. And the, the customer service level that you guys provided for passport holders, for our chamber staff, for the wineries was unparalleled um it would the, the the service level was was amazing you worked with um some of our bigger wineries um directly to to kind of help them understand things and, and help work through some some issues and they were super appreciative of your how quick you were to turn things around and to get answers and like i said if you couldn't do one thing you'd say how about we do this and that would work and it was it was always great to see that and it was always like that. There was never more than a day, never more than 24 hours that went by without a response. Usually we, on the customer service side with our end users, it was immediate. With us, you were trying to figure stuff out and you would get back to us within 24 hours easily. So it was, it was really a great experience. Thank you, Eric. I'm really glad to hear that you had that experience. And as I've shared with you before, you know, I, we, we couldn't do what we do if, if you weren't as engaged as you are. And, and so getting you know, being able to, to talk back and forth with you and getting your responses so quickly allowed us to address anything that came up so fast. And so we just really thank you for being such an awesome partner. Yeah. It was, it was a, definitely a collaboration and definitely yes. a part. It was a part. It was a really a partnership. You know, there are times where you work with companies and you have kind of a mutually beneficial relationship. This really felt like a partnership to me yeah. where you felt invested. Danny felt invested. Everybody on your team was there to help. So it was it was I can't, you know. I'm sitting here because I really, really love the product. So thank you. Thank you so much for, for all of those kind words. We really appreciate that. Um, so Eric, the next thing I wanted to, to talk through was the winery referral program. So we, we touched on that a little bit, and I think I've covered the majority of this at this point, but just to put this slide up there for, for folks to kind of see it in a text format, um, you know, as we as we talk through each winery received their code, there was a, a five dollar off with the order that the guest received by using that code. And then at the end of the campaign, that was handled by the the Calistoga Chamber of Commerce visit Calistoga team. I just wanted to stress that that you guys were the ones that that did that that payout. Um, and without going into too much detail, Eric, about what that that process was like. Um, can you share just a little bit more in general about, sure. about what we did at the end of the campaign in terms of looking at that promo code usage? Sure, absolutely. So I see someone, Margaret, had a question in the chat too, which pertains to this completely. So, yes, exactly. um, so her question is, how did you work out payments with the wineries and did everyone receive the, pay, the same amount per coupon redeemed? So the way we did it is everybody got their own individual code, like Jason said. So like Montalena was Chateau Montalena, which is one of our largest wineries. It's a historic winery in the Valley. They won the, the 
Judgment of Paris in the 70s and brought putting Napa Valley on the map. They were looking at not doing the passport this year. They just were like, it's, you know, it's a lot of labor. It's not a lot of, we don't make anything off it. Bottle sales are weak, blah, blah, blah. And so um, with them specifically, um, we, we, we worked it out with them and said, hey, listen, we're doing this diff different digital passport. And we worked out a deal with them. But every winery that was involved got their own unique individual code. And what they were to do with that is to, like Jason said, put it on social, put it on your website. Um, Chateau Mathelaine and Sterling, another large winery, did Google display ads um, saying $5 off your order using code Sterling23 or Mathelaine23. With that, we were able to see who was selling what. So we all the money that came in from the Passport program came in through Bandwango. Bandwango gave to the chamber. Um, what we would do is go through the list of the promo codes and say, okay, it looks like Montalena has sold X amount. Here's what we're giving them. And then we would pay them out directly. Um, and so there was a split that we had. They get, they, pay, they get paid out if they sell the physical passport and they get paid out if they sell the digital passport. So we were able to see, and Jason was able to run a report for us as well, but I also was able to see it, um, wow. how many they sold. Um, and Montalena absolutely killed it. They, 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 <laughs> they were they, we, out of the world. <laughs> we, we cut them a humongous check. Um, <laughs> and, you know, a lot of the wineries that had been in it previously just stuck to selling paper and they didn't really use the coupon code. They didn't really um, do any digital advertising for it. And when we had our post meeting, our post winter in the wineries meeting, and I told them what Chateau Matalena and Sterling did, I didn't give them exact numbers, but um, I told them how many they sold and they kind of did the mental math. <laughs> they were astounded about yeah. how much that they made and they had made nothing. You know, there's a couple of wines that made zero dollars because they didn't push it. Um, mm -hmm. And now next year they're like, how do we do this? How does this work? Teach us how to, to promote this. Um, so um, Matalina is in for next year. They've already said, what can we do? Sterling's in, you know, all these big wineries that were looking like, is it worth it for us to do it? They now see, a huge return on investment just by selling the passport. Yeah. Um, so we, um, like I said, we try to be equitable with everybody and we, it's our biggest fundraiser. So the split, um, the split actually goes a little more into the winery's favor because they're giving up more than we are than just promotion. So now that they have more skin in the game by just trying to sell paper passports and they can utilize their digital toolbox to sell the digital passport, they, their eyes of the scales have fallen and their eyes are open and they see, how much they can actually make off of this. So it's it's been great. We had our biggest year ever. The wineries that, that participated and sold had their biggest years in sales ever. Um, and, and for some reason this year, more people, um, and, and we had wineries track this, more people that had the digital passport bought more. They bought more memberships, they bought more wine clubs, they bought more bottles. Um, so it was it was interesting to see how that worked out as well. Yeah, I think those are some great points, Eric. And I just wanted to highlight a couple of the things that you said, one of which that the last point that you made, especially with our winery clients, we recognize that an additional sale is really an important focus for them. So whether that be additional bottles or their annual wine club membership, we know that that's an integral piece for these wineries finding an ROI from a campaign like this. And so we were so thrilled to hear that feedback from you that the wine and directly from the wineries, quite frankly, um, I remember getting an email from Montalena to this effect too, where they saw that effect and they saw that ROI. And it was so cool to see how not only you, Eric, when you were initially not sure how this was all going to go, but also how those big wineries yeah. were, were not sure if they really wanted to do this. They were not sure if they really wanted to participate. And by the end of the program, they, they're all in, um, which I think yeah. is great. And, and so, I also love the fact that you had a, a post meeting with everybody. You went through the campaign and you talked through what that was like with the wineries. I think a lot of times that FOMO effect, right? The fear of missing out for folks is, is really what it takes. So just getting a program out there for the first year, as you guys did with Van Wango and, and having it be so successful and having hard numbers that you can share with people yeah. is going to go a long way for you guys when you are really essentially selling the program to to local wineries and merchants for for next year, and so I'm really excited to hear that that you were able to to relay that that information to them. Um, so 
just a lot of a lot of really cool things there. The other thing I wanted to mention, and, and before we move on to the next piece here, is that there are a number of ways that we set up paid passports for our clients. So Eric mentioned that in this case, all of the money went to Calistoga Chamber of Commerce, and then they had a negotiated amount that they were going to pay out the wineries based on those promo codes. And that was something they negotiated with the wineries um, themselves prior yeah. to the campaign. Another popular way that we set up these kinds of programs is what we call paid on redemption. So in that model, the customer purchases this pass, let's say the pass is $20, the customer purchases the pass for $20, then when they redeem their tasting at a location, that is what triggers that winery to then be paid out directly by Ben Wingo. So that's a that's a different model that we can set up for you. In that model, it really takes all of the accounting off of your plate. You guys don't have to worry about anything. Ben Wingo handles all of that. And the wineries or the or the locations, the attractions, whatever they whatever is on your passport, they are paid out on the 15th of the following month. So if if the redemption occurs on February 22nd, on or about March 15th, they'll be paid out for that redemption along with anything else that happened in February. So just a couple of different models. And if you have any questions about which one's best for you, um, your client success person, whether that's me or somebody else is happy to talk that through with you as we begin your project build. So the big reveal, Eric, this is what uh, we've been really excited to, to get to today. And yeah. So why don't you take me through these numbers? Because these are some really big numbers. Even I'm, I even I'm having a reaction seeing them again, <laughs> even though I've seen them many times. Um, can you share just what your what your overall results have been with this campaign this year? Sure. Yeah. So it is. It's a ten week program. So and you know back to the point of of the wineries being involved. It is the slowest time of the year. Um, yep. So we really really try to push bottle sales and wine memberships. For these folks it's it's a way to get people in the door right because during the winter months here it's quiet so yeah. the, anything that we can do we'll do for them and this has been a, a great way to do it so in 10 weeks we start um we have a big event here called the a calisoga lighted tractor parade it's this cute little piece of americana uh we got like ten thousand people in our five thousand person town to come out for it but that's when the passport goes live we start pre-sale in october it goes live from december 2nd this year till Fe mid february so um, in 10 weeks, we did $147,320 in total sales, which still blows my mind. Wow, um, yeah. And that's, that's just digital. That doesn't even include the paper passports that we did sell. Um, yeah. At the winery sale. This is all just Banduango. So the, the in the profit to us was about $128,000. Um, if you would have told me at the beginning of this program that we sold 2032, did we would sell 2032 digital passports, I never would have believed you in a million years. <laughs> um, it, and, and here we are. Um, it, it was amazing to see those numbers just tick up every single day, um, even until the last weeks of the campaign with the physical passports starting at about mid to end, end of January, those sales would start to trickle down. Um, we could see um, when we sold them online, they, you know, we would have to ship them out. I mean, there, there's a whole nother hassle factor to right. the physical passports um, besides just printing, you know, um, we had to send them out so we could see online sales and they would start dwindling starting about mid January. Yes, people didn't have enough time to use it at that point to, yeah. to, to purchase the paper and then receive it by the end and of the campaign. It. Yep. And so what we would, what we noticed is that people were still buying even until the last week of January. Some we had to, we had a couple that even did the last week, first weekend in February. Right. And um, some of them said a couple had to cancel because they had a family emergency come up. But they were selling, they were still selling. Um, and people would be like, we're gonna go up to Calistoga for the weekend and it's the last weekend of the passport and they would buy it the Wednesday before and then come up for the weekend. It was it was absolutely amazing to see because um, usually it was flatlined on the physical passport sign after the last maybe third weekend in, in January. Um, the promo codes um, was great to see too. 1,190 promo codes used is was incredible. Um, like I said before, Montalena and Sterling, Chateau Montalena and Sterling. Really Bayard's led the way. Yeah. Really <laughs> led the way on that. That that number will for sure go up next year, just basing the way people's eyes got big when I told them how things <laughs> were happening with those. Um, and what I was surprised to see was um, when Jason told me the geographic demographics of it, the 41 states and 11 countries that were wow. represented. Um, that, that is crazy. We tend to 
think of this as more of um, a Bay Area kind of program, which is, I think, true in a lot of ways. And we knew we touched other states, but to have those kind of stats and to see um, that we had 41 states and 11 countries represent was, was amazing. Yeah, it's a really cool number. And I think, you know, even though we can't necessarily draw a di direct line with our data from, you know, who purchased the pass and, and maybe who stayed in a hotel, for example, I think it's very clear anecdotally and from just uh, from just looking at these numbers that you had a lot of people from out of the area. And, it, and I think just from our, our feedback that we received from customers and that you received, the wineries received, a lot of people made a point of coming up to Calistoga yeah. for this passport, to use this passport. And you have to assume, um, I, I think it's a safe assumption in this case, I never like to assume, but I think you have to assume in this case that quite a few people probably also extended their stay um, and, and at least stayed one night in order to, to make a weekend out of it or make a few days out of it during the week. And so I think that is a really powerful thing here as well. Right. But um, but yeah, these these numbers, Eric, uh, unbelievable, a testament to your team and all of the work that that you guys did in order to lay that, the, you know, to lay the floor for this and and make sure that this was a successful program. Um, you, you just again, you're such an engaged partner in this that I know that a huge part of the success is is due to what your team did to to lay the groundwork for this. Well, and it, and it, it was a lot of work, but it was also. On, on the honestly on the digital side it was easy like it yeah. was from 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 start to finish you know from Danny and you know we get the Asana task list and and boom 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 it was it was such an easy process I will say to you to those of you that do have a destination portion of your um chamber or whatever it is I did meet with one of our hoteliers and I said you know I wish there was a better way that we could help kind of qualify what came in yeah. and he said well I can run some numbers because we have people whether they bought digital or physical um we asked them and so what he came back he sent me an email and said that they had over the course of the passport this is one hotel year they had 87 bookings that totaled seventeen thousand five hundred dollars wow. <laughs> um for the passport and all we did was have them put an ad in, in our physical passport, and then we had a landing page. We didn't do it on the passport. We're going to figure out that with the banner ads next year. But yeah. um, and they but we did have them on the on the winter in the wineries landing page. They could they could see that on the digital side as well. And that's one property that did seventeen thousand five hundred dollars in bookings, and they only paid thirty five dollars for the ad. So wow. um, it's a good. <laughs> that's all if I could say so, that's, that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was it was amazing here because I never would have guessed that as well. I thought, yeah. you know, I'm sure there's people that come and stay for the passport, and we know that. But just to have one property say, yeah, we did like 18 grand almost in 10 weeks just off of this one thing. So unbelievable, it, unbelievable, yeah, yeah, very very cool. All of the different kind of arms of this that you wouldn't even think. All of the effects of of this program, man. really retail. Cool yeah. Retailers noticed a tick up on weekends that were normally slower because there was more people in town for Passport. The last weekend of Passport, I could not believe how busy the town was. I looked over at Picayune, which is a tasting room across the street, and yeah. they Friday through Sunday were packed with with people in. And they said they had one of their best uh, best Sundays ever uh, for wine sales. So people came in, did the tasting, and bought. And um, it was yeah, it was it was crazy. Yeah, I remember you mentioning to me uh, when you looked out the window and you're just seeing all of these people in town. Um, you know, I think that's the power of this. I, you know, it really, it really can be a draw for for your community if you build something of a great value like this, and, and that's that's something that really highlights the strength of of who you are as a destination. I really think that you can see that that foot traffic. You can see yeah. people coming there for this purpose, which is great. And it provides, um, it provides value to the wineries. It provides value to the retailers, the restaurants, um, our wineries. We had two wineries. One woman said in 2019, they were flat year over year on their paper passport. This year, their sales were up 41% over 2019 <laughs> sales. Um, and um, I had one of our board members who owns a winery just say, yeah, it was pretty good. We, one day we would sell a couple bottles. One day we had someone come in and buy $4,000 worth of wine. Wow. And I was, so yeah, it was, it was, yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was, the people were in a buying mood for sure. Yeah. No, I, I love to hear that. Thank you, Eric. Wow. This, it just keeps coming, right? You know, some right. of these are things you and I haven't even had a chance to discuss yet. So um, yeah. it's so exciting to hear all of this. 
you know, I think as we talk about ROI and we talk about cost, but um, I just wanted you to just in general talk through, because I think that's obviously a huge factor for a lot of our clients. We recognize that everybody's got a uh, budget. Many of you are in budget season right now. You're putting your budget together for your, your July 1 fiscal, for those of you who are on that schedule. So what what was that like for you? How would you compare the the cost of doing the paper passport with the digital passport? So it was it was quite a bit more to do the paper passport. Um, it was uh, it, it's honestly not just not just cost hard cost wise. Like you know, as you can see here on the slide, in yeah. 2022, 2023, we did about four thousand passports, spent fourteen grand. This last year, we did twenty five hundred passports, we spent eleven six. You know, so the cost didn't come down a ton, um, and most of that was design work for the physical printing um shipping things like that so there there's a lot of associated costs but also the labor costs on our end um to do the the paper passport those that's not even calculated into that yeah. um with the right with the digital passport it was basically we sent bandwango you guys content and danny would take that content and the verbiage and it was just like poof magic it was done <laughs> and so from a, a labor standpoint we didn't really have to worry about it as much um and the price of the program for us was significantly less than what we paid for for the the paper side. Um, the the everything that you guys had was was made more sense yeah. to do. And I just saw someone in the chat just ask if they would be continuing to do the paper passport, and we we will. Um, I'm only going to order a thousand next year, um, and then we probably will phase it out after that. Um, there are people that still want to do it. The, the wineries like it because it's cute and showy. But right. um, I, w we waste we wasted a lot of money on on paper passports this year. Of that eleven thousand six hundred, I would guess that we probably ate about six thousand of that of passports just sitting in boxes at our welcome center right now that were never sent out. Um, the nice part about the digital as well is that you can let's say I only order five hundred of the paper passports. If they sell out, they sell out. We have digital for the end of time. You know, it's it. There's no. We're not going to run out of digital passports. So, um, what we're thinking about doing is is printing a thousand of them. Maybe saying this is all we have for paper passports. And if they sell out right away, we know that maybe there's still an appetite for that. But we're going to push the digital more because it's easier, it's cheaper, and it's it's more user friendly. It's easier for the wineries. It's easier for us to track. Um, so. Um, but, but as far as costs go, if, if I could get rid of paper passports, uh, if I could convince my board of directors to get rid of paper passports, I would probably do it for next year. Um, but they want to they want to keep it around. We have a few wineries that are on our board and they want to keep it around to see how it does next year. After that, all bets are off. So well, change, you know, change is hard, as we all know. And so yeah. sometimes it takes a little bit of time to to phase things out. But as we've talked about and as as we just showed with those success numbers this year, I. I think you're well on your way, Eric, to begin that, you know, that phase down process with the paper, as you were mentioning. And, um, you know, we're, we're excited to be part of that journey with you and and uh, to continue the, the digital passport with you. You know, and as as we, um, you know, as we talk through what what we what we're going to kind of go from here and what we're going to do. Um, you know, moving forward, we'll we'll talk through that here in just a moment. I've got a couple of questions for you um, regarding that, but um, I know you mentioned that you want to you want to continue on and and just expand that digital program. We're so excited to yeah. to do that with you. So Lori, thank you for that question. Um, we really appreciate it. Speaking of questions, um, we are are done with kind of the heart of our conversation here. But Eric and I, I have a couple of other questions for Eric that I wanted to go through with him. And I think it's going to be really interesting to hear your responses to these, Eric. So while I ask these questions, please put any other questions that you have in the chat. We're happy to answer anything that you've got for us. Um, and so while you're while you're putting questions in the chat, Eric, what, next thing I wanted to, to ask you, just based on hearing some of the stuff you talked about, um, you know, when you initially were, were doing your Google search and you were looking for a vendor that could help you out with this, what, what is it that you look for when you're trying to choose a vendor? Is there are there certain qualities? Are there certain characteristics that that you really you need to have in order for for you to feel like you're getting an ROI from a program? For sure, yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, price is on top of everybody's mind with the way inflation is and the world is right now. Um, but price doesn't always 
move the needle for me. Um, there has to be a trust level. Um, like I said, I'm a recovering sales guy. And so I can, I can smell out salespeople that, that aren't being straight with me a mile away. And, and through the process with you guys, I knew that right away that I could, I could trust what you were saying because you were honest off the bat with what you could do, what you couldn't do, um, and ways that we could figure it out together. And that's what I appreciated more. Um, I had an old boss tell me um, one time that in, in indus most industries, there's quality, service, price, and you get to pick two, right? You get, that's it. You don't get all three. And I honestly, honestly believe I'm not being paid for this. I honestly believe I got quality service price from Bandwango. The the price point was was so reasonable for what we got. Customer service through Jason and the the whole team on with our clients, with our winery partners, with the end user, with our staff was amazing. Um, and and the quality of the product is great. I mean, it's it's easy to use. It's user friendly. So I, I feel fortunate that we got all three. In one. So when I'm looking to partner with someone, trust is a huge factor um, and level of service is a huge factor. And then and price comes in into play if it's if it's market. But it, that's not the first thing I think about. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You guys uh, delivered all three. Thank you. Thank you. That makes us really happy to hear. <laughs> thank you. Um, you know, another thing and we kind of were just touching upon this, but um, when it when it comes to going from a, a paper passport to a digital passport, especially when it's a program that's been in market for a few years, what was the biggest hurdle for you? Would you say was it was it that factor that that change is hard that people we what kind of always done it this way or what was what was that experience like? That is a hundred percent it. That is exact. We've always done it this way. Why would we switch? It's been successful. We just had our best year ever. <laughs> off of the, you know, 22, 23, why would we try digital? It seems like a waste of money. Um, but I could see that it was trending this way. And as nervous as I was about it, um, I thought we should give it a shot. And like I said, at, at the price point that you guys offer for the program is so reasonable that it was, it made it no brainer for us to at least try it. If it didn't work, it didn't work we were going to make money either way. It might've cut into our funding, but it, it ended up not being that way. We ended up, it ended up killing everything, which was amazing. Um, so the hardest part for us was getting over those. We've always done it this way. Um, and then all the, what ifs, what if it doesn't work? What if this happens? What if that happens? And my response was always, we don't know until we try. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, one of the things I've learned in my career is I can't be afraid to fail. And, um, if you fail, you pick yourself up and you figure it out and you learn from it. And um, I wasn't afraid to fail here. I, I figured if it didn't work, we would just retool it, but it worked beyond everybody's expectations. Um, so yeah, I would say the biggest hurdle was just trying to, especially my board and um, some of the old school wineries, just trying to get them to come into the, the 21st century um, and, and be on board with it. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point. And I think, you know, we obviously work with a, a lot of clients and I think that is, that kind of fear of taking that first step and, and taking that risk is is what sometimes holds folks back from beginning a program. But I think you're a really great example of, you know, the as you mentioned, the 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 overall cost of this program is you're getting a great ROI, um, and so why not take a chance and and see how it goes, and and then you'll have hard data, you'll have you know real learnings that you can use to improve the program for the next year. If yeah. it's successful and, and retool it or, or go a different route with a different kind of passport if, if you didn't. And so I really am, you know, I was really happy that you guys were, were so willing to jump in with both feet and just give it a go and for us all to, to partner in that together. So um, thank you. Um, you know, while, while we were talking, Eric, Vanessa asked a question that's gonna lead right into our, my next question for you. Okay. So thank you, Vanessa. Um, Vanessa asked, was the promo code the main way that the wineries promoted the pass? Um, and the reason that leads right into what I was gonna ask you was just to kind of, again, kind of talk through that, the importance of bringing your wineries into the fold with you in terms of marketing and in terms of getting the word out. So maybe if you can speak to that and, and what Vanessa was asking when it comes to, you know, is that the way, the main way that Montalena and Sterling and others were pushing this out there to the world? And it was, it definitely was. Um, yeah. They, uh, they had it on their social. Um, like I said, they did Google display ads. If you Googled 
Calistoga Winter in the wineries, a lot of the times an ad, you'd be served an ad from Google Display ad from Montalena or Sterling before you would even hit our landing page because yeah. um, we had it like SEO primed. Um, and I think that was a huge way that Montalena and Sterling sold. Um, the other, some other wineries, there's a couple that did it on social, um, a couple sold on site. Um, they did it that way as well. Um, but um, yeah, they, they, the promo code and advertising through, through Google and, and Meta, I think were probably the biggest ways that they did that. And it, it worked out really well for them. Yeah, I mean, clearly Montalena's numbers and Sterling's numbers were a testament to how successful those those campaigns that they ran were. So, yeah. um, absolutely. Uh, Kate asked, uh, um, you know, and this this kind of lead us into a, a different topic here. Um, Kate asked about um, adding, including additional discounts to hotels, restaurants, shops, and spas in the digital passport. Um, mm -hmm. And and was it a separate area um, on the page design? So before I toss it over to you, Eric, just to kind of speak to this a little bit from the Bandwango setup side of things. Um, you know, when we do these passports, we really are looking to really provide the consumer with a clear picture of what they're getting. And so with this winter in the wineries passport, we really focused on just putting wineries on the passport. We didn't want to clutter it with other things. We wanted it to, to be, you know, what the name said to the consumer that it would be. And so that was that was all that was on the passport. Now, the, the wineries could offer additional discounts if they wanted to. So if they wanted to offer, you know, a 5 or $10 off their annual wine club membership or 10% off an additional bottle purchase, they certainly could do that within the, the structure of the pass. In terms of the, the hotels and the restaurants and the shops and spas and whatnot, I know Eric touched on hotels earlier. And so what a lot of our clients have had success with that Eric also had success with is featuring the, the hotels or if you have sponsors, for example, on the landing page on your website. Um, you guys are the ones creating that landing page. Banwingo does not create the landing page. We provide HTML codes for the purchase card so that people can click and, and make their purchase on your site and so that all of that traffic stays on your site. We don't want it going off to another website and you losing that that power in Google search and that power of the data on your site. So, um, but anyway, when you build that landing page, that's a great place to feature those hotels, those other experiences, maybe tours even that might not be appropriate for the passport itself, just because of how the passport functions. But you're still, you're still able to tell those partners then, Hey, we drove this many visits to this page. We had you know, more than 2000 people sign up through this page. So they saw your content, you know, you can perhaps tell them even if you have it set up, you know, who clicked on what and, and show them how many clicks they received. Eric, do you want to speak to anything else in terms of that? Sure. Um, and I, I did. So I go into Google Analytics a little bit. And right now, the for the last 30 days, even at this point, um, Winter in the Wineries is still like the third or fourth most clicked on page on our website. Um, as far as the retail restaurants, hotels, um, it's just like Jason said. Um, we had that on our landing page. I know that you can do banner ads in Bandwango. Yes. So I think, and we didn't take advantage of this this last year, and we should have. But I think next year, what we're going to do is have a banner ad on there that basically says restaurant, retail, whatever specials, however we want the verbiage to go on that banner ad, and that will take them to a separate landing page that lists out all of the specials. Um, so the restaurants would do. Um, basically free corkage for any wine purchased at a participating winery from the passport. And there are retail sales, there's hotel sales. Um, we did have a, um, a little bit of a complaint that, that it wasn't reaching the audience and that was on us. We should have done that banner ad instead of just relying on the uh, landing page. So we're gonna work with Jason and his team on, on making that banner ad kind of stand out, but then it won't, it won't be in the passport. Like Jason said, it'll take them back to a page of ours where they can see that because the focus should be the program, the passport program on that, on their phone. Yeah. Yeah. Great point on the banner ads. And, and just to, you know, to kind of hit the high points on those banner ads, we, we can include a banner ad on the passport itself. And so with that, we will ask for an image from you and then whatever URL you want that ad to then link off to. Um, and that banner ad can cycle through multiple 
ads as well. So if you have multiple partners you want to feature or hotel partners you want to feature, it we can set it so that it'll cycle through. I, I believe we can set it anywhere between like five and 10 seconds. It'll, it'll change to the next one. Another place that you can put a banner ad, and Eric, we're just getting started on our conversation for next year here. So, um, but you know, another place you can, you can put your banner ad is on the email confirmation. So as soon as somebody purchases the pass, or if you have a free passport program, for those of you who may have that, who are watching, um, the, the guest immediately gets an email and a text message with a link to their passport after they sign up or purchase. So when they, when they get that email, it says something along the lines of, you know, in your case, Eric, it said, you know, thank you for your order from Calistoga Chamber of Commerce. And it says winter in the wineries passport. Um, it's got a, a banner image that, you know, has either your destination logo or a, a beautiful hero image of your destination. And then, um, you can have a banner underneath that that, again, links off to, to wherever you'd like it to go. So multiple places that you can put that in, that is all included in your, your contract. We get that, that question a lot. There's no additional charge to add a banner ad to your passport. If you do want to use that as a revenue generation right. source for you, um, we, we ask that our clients handle those negotiations prior to coming to Banwango. So let's just say, for example, that um, you know, Sterling wanted to advertise on, on the passport next year. That's a conversation that Eric and, and the Sterling Winery would have offline. And then when we kick off our project for 2024, 2025, Eric would then say to me, okay, they're on board. We've negotiated a, a price with them for this sponsorship feature. And here's their, their creative for you to plug into the passport and we'll take it from there. So, um, Great point, and we'll we'll work on getting that set up for you next year, Eric. Yeah, um, yeah. I do see another question here, um, and the question is: I see on your website that people could use their pass by showing it to other locations for a discount or complimentary corkage fee. How was that feedback? And do these businesses like the pass as well? I think you kind of started to touch upon that, Eric, but I'll expand on it. Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, so the, the, the corkage fee was free wineries or the restaurants really didn't have a problem with it at all. They were still selling food and there were still people in the door in January, um, you know, on like a Thursday night. So they were, you know, even a Wednesday night sometimes. So they were pretty happy with that. Um, the feedback overall on the passport is generally good. Um, it's, you know, any sort of traffic that time of year is good traffic. So if someone's offering a 10 to 15% discount on retail, um, and they get somebody in the door to buy something, they're happy. Um, so um, lodging, lodging loves it, restaurants love it, and retail loves it. So it's, it's overall, it's good. Like I said earlier, we could have done a better job of making those deals a little clearer, um, which we'll use the banner ads for next year. But, um, but overall, everybody's, you know, really thinks that it, the program's worthwhile, especially in those months. Great. Thank you. And forgive me, I'm just looking through these questions and, and making sure I get everybody in here before we end today. Um, we have another question here. And uh, the question is, we haven't found a way to get restaurants and wine bars involved with our current wineries paid pass. And I love the idea of waived corkage. Was that a hard sell to the restaurants? Was it used, capitalized on by consumers? And she said, answered, thank you. But yes, it was, it wasn't a hard sell. Um, it, it wasn't. Um, if you go to them, and especially if you have a slow season where you are and you explain to them, hey, this is going to help get traffic in. And some people might have cocked a lot of one of our main restaurants and guides on our board said a lot of people would do the free corkage and two people would have wine and two people would drink cocktails. So they were still getting bar revenue even though they were waving the corkage and maybe not selling two glasses of wine, they were still getting the food, they were still getting dessert, they were still getting cocktails. So um, they were pretty happy with it overall. Great. Forgive me for that, Ali. I'm trying to manage looking at the chat and, and, and uh, hosting here at the same time. So thank you. And thank you for your questions. Um, as we begin to wrap up here, we have just about five minutes left. And so Eric, um, the last thing I really wanted to touch upon with you is kind of looking toward the future, which feels like a natural next step for us. You know, we're already talking about some things that we'll do for your passport for next year. But, you know, I, I'm curious, you know, what what are your plans for for winter in the wineries next year? Um, you know, what what learnings did you have or, or what might you want to improve upon for next year? Um, so for next year, we're going to, we're going to promote the digital side a lot more heavily than we did in the past. Um, we're going to, we're going to promote how ease of use, 
Um, and the whole, you know, we're going to try to do some funny ads about not losing the passport, you know, the paper presser. So we're really going to push that out. We're going to really engage our winery members on um, using the promo codes more um, that for the ones that didn't this year, we're going to try to really push them. Um, it's in their best interest to do it. Um, they, they get a, a, a cut of those sales. It helps bring people into their wineries. So the more we can engage them, the better. Um, I do recommend doing a pre a pre passport meeting and a post passport meeting. Um, it was invaluable for us to get feedback on what worked, what didn't. Um, it was funny in that post meeting, I had, um, our, one of our events people, she was taking notes and I said, all right, so what do we need to improve on for next year? And I said, Jenna, get ready to take a lot of notes. And there wasn't, <laughs> there wasn't a lot. It was, yeah. it was pretty great. Um, you know, Tank is one of our, um, it's kind of a funky winery in town. It's a cool winery. One thing that they did, they loved the passport. They've always loved it. This year, they loved the digital. And they said, we gave 40% off their first bottle purchase to get people in the door. And wow. people would come in and buy two or three bottles. Um, so they really worked out ways to make that passport work. Um, I see using what you guys have in different things. You and I, right now, we're working on a well, we do this thing called Wellness Week in town. It's coming up at the end of April. And we're using... It's, it's a guide. We're calling it a guide. It's really a passport to get people into town for um, to do yoga lessons or stand up paddle boarding or do Zumba or everything that you can do in a, in a wellness week. But through a passport, we're calling it a guide. Um, we're talking about doing another summer passport for wineries with Bandwango. So it's really opened my eyes to the possibilities of what you can do in different, not just a winery or a beer passport, but different ways you can use um the software to to get it into people's hands and to get them to use it because even now people are asking i see that there's going to be a guide for wellness week when is it going to go live when is it going to go live so it goes live in like a week or so and people are chomping at the bit for it yeah no that's great and and you know those weren't programs that you initially planned on doing with us either i remember when we first started talking i mean we were all in on winter in the wineries and that was your focus and um and so just over the course of, of that program, it sounds like, as you said, you kind of saw the other possibilities, right? Yeah. yeah. It doesn't just have to be a wine passport, a beer passport. It can be, you can use it in a lot of different ways is what I'm seeing. So I'm excited to see how many downloads we get of this Wellness Week guide um, when it goes live. I think we'll get a lot and um, we're pushing that out a ton. So as soon as that goes live, all of our social, all of our ads go right to that. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Absolutely, Eric. And I'm after this call today, I'm going to get back to work on getting that thing ready for you with our team. And um, I know that our, our project manager is working hard on it. So we'll push that one out the door here very soon for you. Well, um, we got two minutes left, so I'm going to, to wrap things up for the day. But thank you again, Eric, so much for, for all your time today and for being such a fantastic collaborator with this. Um, you mentioned Danny on our team. I did want to provide a special shout out to Danny Floyd, the project manager on this passport, who did such a fantastic job of, of building this and getting it together. Um, I want to give a special shout out to our community relations team as well, Christian Treiber, for, for her work on, on getting the wineries onboarded onto the passport. And really to, to everybody, um, you know, for all of my colleagues who, who worked so hard on this and, and made it such a, a fantastic success. Um, as we wrap up, the last thing I'll say is we've got our contact information here on the screen for myself and for Tessa Calfell, our VP of Client and Community Relations. Tessa is on the call listening today. And so either of us are happy to answer any questions. And uh, Eric has been gracious enough to, to let me know that if I receive anything that, that perhaps he's better to answer, he's happy to um, have me forward those on to him. So um, again, thank you all. Thank you so much for watching today. And with that, we're gonna wish you a wonderful rest of the week and whatever's left here of March. And we will look forward to seeing you for our April webinar when we get that ready to go. Keep an eye on your inbox for that announcement. Awesome. Thank you everybody so much. Thank you.